Hey everyone, welcome to my new tutorial. So today I want to make a little bit higher fidelity render of the Pokeball. If you enjoy this kind of stuff, please leave a like, it really helps my channel to grow. And if you're new to the channel and you'd like to see content like this in the future, please hit that subscribe and the bell button if you want to get notified when I release something new. And if you're new to the world of 3D and Blender, and you want to become a 3D illustrator, go and check out my courses that are carefully designed to teach you beginner and intermediate skills in quickest and most effective way. For example, with the new Ultimate 3D bundle, you can go from simple cubic designs all the way to full character illustration in a matter of weeks. So if you're interested, please go check out the link in the description. Now let's jump right into empty blender file and I will just select everything, press X and choose delete. We don't need any of it. And now let's press shift A and let's add a new object here. Uh, I think will be benefit from the UV sphere. So let's select the UV sphere. And first thing I want to do is to press R then X and 90 degrees. So it's rotated on X axis. And now if you go closer, um, we can just cut out this area here and they'll create that hole we need for the Pokeball. So let's tab in and let's just select these vertices right there, press X and delete them. So this is the basic shape we'll need and now we'll need to cut out the ring. So let's look from the front by pressing one on an numpad and we can use the knife tool for this. So let's press K for a knife tool. And this is basically the only tool that got changed in Blender 3 in terms of the modeling. So there are some shortcuts that are different while using the knife tool. Um, you can just snap to this first point here, click to start cutting. Now for the cut through, you need to press C instead of Z. You can see how these dots become a little bit stronger green. That means that these are cutting through the geometry all the way to the other side. And now you can just choose the axis you want to align with. So you can press X here and click. And additionally, of course, we need to confirm with enter. So this is how you make a cut in Blender 3. So let's press K again. Click here, C and X, click and confirm. And let's do these on the other side as well. Okay, this should work just fine. And now if we rotate to the other side, we need to complete these loops. Um, first thing I want to do is to select this vertex in the middle and just press Ctrl X to dissolve it. That will create this angle on here, which I don't mind really. And I will just connect these vertices. Um, this is not perfectly aligned, but that won't matter that much at this scale. So let's just select these two vertices by holding Shift and press J to connect them. And let's do the same here. And on the other side. Okay, and now we can connect these with J. And this will create the loops we'll need. So let's look from the front. And we can toggle the X-ray here. And go for face select by pressing 3 on an numpad. And just select these faces all around. Press X and delete faces. So this will be our basic shape for the Pokeball. Let's disable the X-ray. And now we'll just add few modifiers to keep it simple. So let's go to the modifiers tab and let's add a solidify modifier and we'll add some thickness to it, something like 0.06. Um, that should work just fine. And additionally, we can add bevel modifier and reduce the amount to something like 0.003 or 5. If you have trouble adjusting this, you can hold shift for smaller increments. Okay, and now we'll add one segment here and let's go to the geometry and we'll switch this to arc. And now we have a nice shape here. So if you tab out and press Ctrl 1, they'll add subdivision modifier here. And since we added the bevel modifier, we have supporting loops all around. So now just right click shade smooth and we have a nice smooth Pokeball shape. Now we'll continue by adding another sphere here. So let's press Shift A and let's add a UV sphere. And now again, we'll press RX 90 to rotate, tab in and we'll scale this down to match the inside of that shape. So something like this. So we barely just touch on the side there. And first thing I want to do is to save this front part here um, so we can reuse it later. So let's select these faces right there, press Shift D, right click to release, press P and choose selection to separate it into a different object. 
and now we can tab out right click and shade smooth and we have our smooth inside of the ball and we have separated object here so let's tab in and first i want to press ctrl r to create the loop cut here right click to release and now go back to the face select by pressing 3 alt click this outside loop press x and delete faces and additionally i don't want that vertex right here so let's switch back to the vertex select by pressing 1 select this vertex and press ctrl x and now let's toggle the x-ray go back to the face select by pressing 3 select this inside face and press i to inset okay and alt click this loop right there press x and delete faces so we have these two separate shapes and now select all by pressing a and press e to extrude just like that let's toggle the x-ray again and now select this inside face press g then y and move it towards the front a little bit more and press ctrl b to do one bevel right there okay and now we'll add the bevel so tab out shift click the main pokeball shape and let's choose the bevel click this arrow here and choose copy to select it that will add that bevel there and we can additionally press ctrl 1 to add subdivision modifier here as well so this is basically it for the modeling there's not much to it and we have a nice pokeball shape and we'll need to add some materials some lighting here and when you have object this simple and you want to present it mostly it will be about the lighting and the presentation because you don't have much to show um there will be not much in the scene to reflect so yeah it will be basically all about lighting and this will be more realistic looking object so in those cases i choose to go for hdri lighting so first of all let's select everything shift click the ball press ctrl p and set parent to object let's look from the front by pressing one on the numpad press g then z and move this up okay and now let's press shift a and let's add a plane tap in and scale it up this will serve as our background just like this and now let's press 2 for edge select select this edge in the back press e and z to extrude and select this edge in the middle press ctrl b and adjust the number of cuts with the mouse wheel just like that and we can additionally tap out and scale it up even more and move it back on the y axis so g then y and move it back Okay, right click and shade smooth for the background and now we'll add a camera so I think something like this should work um, I really like this angle right here so let's press shift a add the camera and now hold ctrl alt and press 0 on an numpad to set the camera to current view and now go to the output settings and I will enter something like 1600 to 1200 and I will choose the background, shift click the camera, I'll press N for the sidebar and in the rotation, right click on the Z rotation and copy single to select it that will adjust the background with our camera. And this will be our basic setup uh, for this scene. So let's now set up some render settings. I will go to the render tab and enable ambient occlusion bloom, screen space reflection and refraction in the EV for better previews and now switch to cycles. I will go for GPU compute since I have GPU enabled in the preferences. And here this is one more little change in Blender 3. Um, the sampling is one tab which has different sections for viewport and render and they both have their own denoise checkbox before you had these denoise checkboxes um, more together so this is the only change but basically it does the same thing um, i will reduce the samples to something like 512 here and go to the performance section and reduce the tile size to 512 so it's a little bit more optimized for my gpu and that'll be it basically now if you preview you can see the render preview in cycles and material preview and if you go here and enable scene lights and scene world you will see an actual ev preview in your material preview okay so let's set up that basic lighting and i will go to the shading tab and let's go ahead switch this to world and let's set up that environment texture so i will choose the background node 
And if you don't have the Node Wrangler add-on active, make sure to go to the Preferences, Add-ons and enable Node Wrangler. And then you can press Ctrl T to enable texture mapping. And you can see it's automatically environment texture here. And now we'll just open our HDRI map. I've downloaded one from HDRI Haven. Um, you can check it out too. There is a link in the description. So I'll just press open, navigate to my map and select it. Right now we won't see anything happening because here in the shading tab, we still have the default HDRI viewport shading. So if you want to see the result, you will need to enable scene world. And this is the HDRI I've selected. And now I just want to rotate it 180 degrees on the Z axis in the mapping. So the sun is shining from this side here and we have a nice little backlight. So this will be our HDRI lighting. Now let's go back to the layout view and let's add some colors. So first of all, I will select the background and let's add the background material. And I want to go all black here and increase the roughness. And now let's select the ball and we'll add a new material. Let's call this white and I will reduce the roughness to something like 0.2. So it's really glossy, maybe even 0.1. Um, so it's really reflective. And now let's add a new material slot. And this will be the red color. Let's choose some nice red color like this. Tab in, hover over the top half of the ball and click assign. Now tab out and I want to adjust the roughness to something like 0.3. So it's a little bit glossy, but not that much um, as the white color underneath. And now let's select the ball in the middle. Let's create a new, let's call it black. And I want to go for all black color with roughness 0.1. So it's glossy as well. And I want to add some metallic material here. So let's select this central piece, create a new material. Let's call this metal. And let's just increase the metallic all the way to one. This is already starting to look nice, but I want a little bit of the light that flashes when you catch a Pokemon or something. So we can add a new material slot here and let's call this light tab in, select this part around by pressing L and click assign. So we have a different material here and I want to go for full transmission there. And let's scroll down and in the viewport display, let's check screen space refraction. Remember we enabled it in the EV settings, but we need to enable it for the particular material as well. So we have some refraction there and actually 0.5 transmission should be enough and we can add some subsurface. So let's enter 0.5 to subsurface value and you can add subsurface color here as well. But I think this will be enough to kind of simulate that translucent plastic type of material and additionally if you want it to shine you can add some emission here just like that and add some emission strength so this is just the basic setup with some hdri uh, let's limit the render preview here with ctrl b and i will hold z and switch to render it and you can see this is starting to look nice. It's pretty realistic. If you go to the render settings in the color management, you can even achieve a nice look right away if you adjust the contrast and exposure. But I think it misses something. It's just too plain. Um, the HDRI is mostly overcast, so there are no strong shadows or anything. Um, this is very soft HDRI lighting that I used mostly for the reflections. And what I like to do next is to add some artificial lighting. So let's go back to the material preview. Let's press shift A and let's add some light. Let's add area light, press G then Z, move it up. And I will hold period, switch to 3D cursor and let's hit R, X, 45 degrees, minus. And let's press R, Z to rotate it to the side like this. And again, we can press R and X twice to tilt it even more towards the bottom and make it a little bit larger. And now let's set the strength to something like 500. So it's much stronger here. And let's change this to disc and maybe change the color so it matches the HDRI a little bit more. And now you can just rotate this around and look for the reflection you like. And you can see right away it looks a little bit better, a little bit more stylized. 
And what I like to do next is to add some strong backlight, which will generate really strong shadows. So let's rotate this a little bit and let's press Shift A, add a point light. I want some strong light here in the back, can be a little bit blue, maybe. And I think we can go all the way to 1500 here. And you can see we have nice shadows in the front and a little bit more definition around the Pokeball. And now we can add even more lights um, towards the background so it's backlit so let's go to the camera view let's change this to something more vibrant like a cyan color and let's ramp this up to 5000 and now let's play with those exposure settings here and additionally we can play with the composition so we can move the ball to the side a little bit and now Press shift right bracket to select everything here, press alt D, shift Z to move it on X and Y's axis and scale it down a bit and rotate. And you can see how this added more shadows, more of these light streaks and really the scene is more dynamic now I would say. Okay, so that's the quick Pokeball scene for you with lighting. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please leave a like. It will really help me. And again, if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe. Thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day.